Welcome to Lecture Online. Now let's try it using synthetic division to find the roots of this particular equation which represents a parabola, second order equation. We know the parabola opens upward and at this point we're not even sure if it has roots because unless we factor it or use the quadratic formula we wouldn't know but that's not the point in this video. In this video we're going to learn how to use synthetic division to find the roots and usually it's a trial and error kind of method. We try a number, it works, doesn't work, we try another number. And using synthetic division, we usually know if we're going in the right direction or not. So let me show you. First of all, what we're going to do is write the coefficients of the parabola over here. So we have 1, negative 2, and 3. We draw two lines like this. And now we're going to try some roots. So let's say the first root we try where x is equal to 1. So we place a 1 there. We place another line down here and then we drop this one down over here and now we multiply one times one and place it over there we add the two together we get negative one we go one times the negative one we get negative one added together we get two since this number is not equal to zero that means x equals one is not a root so x equals one is not a root and then we try again we try something different how about x equals negative one so we reset ourselves, we clean everything off, and so now we're going to try x equals negative 1. Again, of course, you have the coefficients, you drop the first one down, negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, add the two together, you get negative 3, negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3, add them together, you get a 6. So here you can see that also doesn't work, it's not equal to 0, so therefore x equals negative 1 is not a root. All right. Let's try x equals 2. x equals positive 2 and see what we get here. Again, we need to clean up, so this now becomes a positive 2. And so we try x equals a positive 2. We drop down the 1. 2 times 2 is positive 2. Add that together, you get 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Add it together, you get 3. Again, it's not 0, so x equals 2 is not one of the roots. How about x equals negative 2? Let's try that. We try negative 2. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add it together, you get negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is... Oh, negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Add it together, you get 11. So this is not equal to 0. Again, we didn't find a root. x equals negative 2 is not a root. Now notice this number is beginning to grow. Now if I plug in a larger negative number, if I try negative 3 and this number keeps on getting bigger, the trend that would indicate that there's no, no root when I let x be a negative number. And if I plug in a bigger positive number, and again, I don't get this to be 0 and this number begins to grow in size, then I begin to realize there's no root in that direction either. So this equation, or this parabola, may not have a root at all. All right, let's try a few more. So now we're going to try a positive 3 and see what happens. Positive 3, we drop the 1, 3 times 1 is equal to 3, negative 2 times a, a plus a 3 is a positive 1, 3 times 1 is 3, add it together you get a 6, so again we tried x equals 3 and notice this number is beginning to grow and it looks like x equals 3 is not a root. We'll try one more time for x is equal to negative 3 equals negative 3, Make that a negative 3. Negative 3 times a 1 is equal to negative 3. Add it together, you get negative 5. Negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 15. Add it together, you get a positive 18. And it looks like that number is getting bigger and bigger. So again, I do not believe that there's a root. x equals negative 3 does also not represent a root. I must conclude that this equation does not have a root. We can find out real quick by using the quadratic formula to see if our synthetic division worked for us the way it should. And so when we say that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a, and we plug in some numbers, b would be negative 2, so that would be negative times the negative 2 is a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 quantity squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a which is 2 times 1 
Now we can determine whether or not we have roots when we look at the determinant. So let's simplify that a little bit more. So this is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 12 divided by 2, which is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 divided by 2. Notice our determinant is a negative number. A negative number in the determinant means we do not have roots, so no roots. And it means that our methodology using the synthetic division seemed to work. Now you say, wow, you had to try so many times before you finally realized there are no roots. I simply wanted to show you that this is an iterative method. You try it, you try one number, you try another number, see what happens. When the trend looks like this is not going to converge to zero, you determine the root isn't there. Sometimes you have to have a little patience because you really don't know if there are any roots, especially when you're dealing with uh, polynomials of third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, where you don't have this nice little method here, this neat method to double check your, your values.